In this book review, you will explore the profound impact of stress on your well-being by considering how you would respond if a friend were in debilitating pain. Most likely, you would extend empathy and insist on seeking medical help. However, when the tables are turned, individuals often adopt a facade of strength, believing they can endure physical or emotional pain by suppressing it or redirecting their focus to others' issues. This coping strategy, unfortunately, proves ineffective and even perilous to health. By denying and avoiding personal problems, individuals not only jeopardize their well-being but also obscure their internal vulnerabilities. The refusal to heed the body's signals leads to a detrimental outcome that is often realized too late. It is imperative to confront the root causes of illnesses, reclaim control over one's health, and discard the illusion of invincibility. The review delve into various aspects of stress and health, shedding light on how trauma can distort gut feelings, unveiling the surprising kindness exhibited by individuals with ALS, and highlighting the nuanced role of negative thoughts and overall well-being. These insights encourage a deeper understanding of the complexities involved in managing stress and its implications for mental and physical health. The field of psychoneuroimmunology explores the intricate connections between physical and mental health, challenging the conventional theory of mind-body dualism that isolates the mind's inner workings from the rest of the body. While common risk factors like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and smoking contribute to heart disease, job strain emerges as a paramount risk factor, significantly impacting blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Despite the prevalence of dualism in medical theories, psychoneuroimmunology provides compelling evidence that emotions play a pivotal role in influencing physiology. This emerging field delves into the processes through which emotions can affect the immune system and overall health. Numerous studies highlight how daily experiences and stressors can impact immune system function, with instances like medical students experiencing immune suppression under exam pressure. Emotions, described as electrical, chemical, and hormonal discharges from the nervous system, exert a profound influence on major organs and immune defenses. Stress, in particular, has the capacity to disarm the immune system, potentially leading to chronic illnesses. A poignant example is Mary, a patient with scleroderma, an autoimmune disease causing stiffening of various tissues. Mary's emotional repression, stemming from a history of abuse and constant protection of her sisters, could have contributed to the deterioration of her immune defenses, leaving her susceptible to the effects of scleroderma. This insight underscores the importance of recognizing the interconnectedness of emotional well-being and physical health in the study of psychoneuroimmunology. Stress, at its core, is a response triggered by the perception of a threat a feeling that something vital for survival is under jeopardy. While the specific stressors vary among individuals due to their unique interpretation systems, the fundamental processing mechanism involves the brain and nervous system. For instance, losing a job may induce greater stress for someone living paycheck to paycheck compared to a well-off executive with substantial savings. The pervasive impact of stress extends across various body systems, with primary effects on the hormonal, immune, and digestive systems. The initial response to a perceived threat involves the release of the hormone CRH by the hypothalamus, located in the brainstem. This sets off a hormonal cascade, leading to the release of cortisol from the adrenals, situated above the kidneys. Cortisol, acting on nearly every tissue and organ, orchestrates responses like immune suppression, blood diversion from organs to muscles, and increased heart rate, aiming to enhance focus on the imminent threat for a rapid reaction. While cortisol is beneficial for acute, short-term stress responses, chronic stress can lead to detrimental outcomes. Prolonged elevated cortisol levels in chronic stress situations can result in tissue damage, elevated blood pressure, and heart damage. Research on chronic stress's impact on immune function, specifically on natural killer NK, cells, revealed significant suppression of NK cell activity in caregivers of individuals with Alzheimer's disease who experienced chronic stress. These caregivers also exhibited delayed wound healing and reduced responsiveness to influenza immunization. 
This highlights how chronic stress can adversely affect the body, providing insights into the intricate interplay between the mind and physiological responses. Stress can have profound and even self-destructive effects on the body, as illustrated by Rachel's experience. Growing up in a family dynamic marked by constant conflict with her older brother, Rachel internalized a need to maintain a well-behaved image. On a significant occasion like Rosh Hashanah, she endured extreme stress when she felt compelled to leave a family dinner to accommodate her brother's preferences, leading to a flare-up of her rheumatoid arthritis. This incident serves as a vivid example of stress confusing the body, causing it to turn against itself. The delicate balance of the immune system is crucial to prevent it from harming the very tissues it is designed to protect. Stress-induced immune responses can contribute to the development of autoimmune diseases, where the immune system attacks the body's joints, connective tissue, or organs. Individuals with autoimmune diseases often grapple with boundary-setting challenges, blurring the lines between self and others, prioritizing external needs while suppressing their own. This emotional repression reflects in their immune systems, leading to a misguided attack on healthy cells. Autoimmune diseases, like rheumatoid arthritis, have multifaceted causes, but the connection to emotional factors is evident. A study from 1965 examined healthy relatives of women with rheumatoid arthritis, revealing that those testing positive for an antibody associated with the disease showed higher scores in psychological scales reflecting the inhibition of anger and concern about the social acceptability of their behaviors. The presence of this antibody suggested that emotional repression and resulting stress had already triggered immune reactivity potentially setting the stage for the development of rheumatoid arthritis under further stressful conditions. If you discover even a hint of value in our content, we'd be truly grateful for your support through likes, shares, and subscriptions. It's surprising that 88% of our listeners haven't engaged yet, so I kindly ask for your support. Your comments are not just a guiding star but also the foundation of our progress. Thank you. Now, let's delve back into the review. Learned helplessness, a common coping style in the face of crisis, can lead to detrimental consequences, including the onset of disease. This coping mechanism, characterized by a sense of helplessness and inaction even when the opportunity for change is present, often emerges as a response to prolonged exposure to environmental stressors. The story of Natalie, one of the author's patients, exemplifies the impact of learned helplessness on health. Natalie faced a series of significant stressors in the spring and summer of 1996, including her son's discharge from drug rehab and her husband Bill's surgery for a malignant tumor, which was later found to have spread to his liver. Amid these challenges, Natalie experienced symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, and ringing in her ears. A diagnosis of multiple sclerosis (MS), a disease affecting the central nervous system, came in July. While the causes of MS remain elusive, research suggests a potential link to environmental factors, particularly stress. Studies indicate that a substantial percentage of MS patients experienced symptom onset following highly stressful events, and those facing extreme stressors are significantly more likely to suffer symptom exacerbation. Stress alone is not the sole culprit. Rather, it is the conditioned helplessness in response to environmental challenges that poses a greater threat to health. Natalie's learned helplessness manifested in her tireless care for her husband despite his transgressions, such as infidelity, heavy drinking, and public embarrassment. By never saying no and repressing her emotions, Natalie shielded herself from actively experiencing stress, but this came at the cost of leaving her immune system vulnerable to attack. The story underscores the profound impact of coping styles and environmental factors on health outcomes, emphasizing the need to address learned helplessness for overall well-being. The advice to go with your gut reflects the intricate connection between the brain and the intestines, where constant communication shapes our conscious awareness of gut feelings. This communication involves the brain interpreting data from sensory organs and physiological events in the gut reinforcing the brain's interpretation. However, when individuals endure numerous gut-wrenching experiences, such as trauma or chronic stress, 
the neurological communication channel can become oversensitized. This oversensitization can result in heightened pain perception, where even weaker stimuli trigger nerves to induce greater pain compared to others under similar circumstances. The key message here is that traumatic events can distort people's perception of physiological pain. This distortion is particularly evident in individuals with irritable bowel syndrome IBS, a functional disorder that affects bodily functions without a clear explanation based on infection or abnormalities. Research shows a high incidence of sexual and physical abuse among IBS patients, suggesting a link between altered nervous system responses and increased sensitivity to stressful stimuli. Studies have delved into this phenomenon by artificially distending participants' colons, revealing that those with functional disorders exhibited hypersensitivity and greater pain during distension compared to control groups. Brain scans further demonstrated the activation of the prefrontal cortex in patients with functional disorders, indicating an interpretation of physiological stimuli as more extreme. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for storing emotional memories and interpreting present stimuli in light of past experiences, plays a crucial role. If psychological damage is the root cause of functional disorders, psychological interventions may be effective in treatment. In one study, group therapy sessions teaching better behavioral coping strategies resulted in a reduction of abdominal complaints for IBS patients, and this improvement persisted even during a follow-up examination two years later. In 1998, at the 9th International ALS Symposium, a fascinating observation was made about patients with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS), a disease affecting nerve cells controlling muscle movement. Neurologists noted that technologists conducting ALS tests often predicted the absence of the disease based on the patient's perceived niceness. Although niceness might not seem like a scientific measure, it was considered a significant component of the ALS personality. The key message is that certain illnesses are associated with particular personality types. People with ALS often share common backstories involving childhood experiences of emotional deprivation or loss, leading to emotional repression and extreme dutifulness in adulthood, creating the appearance of unfailing niceness. The iconic baseball player Lou Gehrig, who had ALS, exemplified this personality, displaying extreme kindness to teammates while being relentless in his commitment to playing, even through injuries. Similarly, individuals with cancer often exhibit shared traits. A 1984 study comparing stress responses among people with melanoma, heart disease, and a healthy control group revealed that melanoma patients were more likely to deny feeling upset or anxious after stress-inducing stimuli, suggesting emotional repression and a desire to maintain a strong facade. It's crucial to emphasize that no personality trait directly causes diseases like ALS or cancer. However, these shared traits, coupled with genetic predisposition, may contribute to an individual's vulnerability to illness. The human brain undergoes unique development, with approximately 90% occurring after birth. As newborns, our brains are small and immature, but rapid growth takes place in the first few months, forming millions of new connections. This emphasizes the profound influence of our environment during early life on shaping our understanding of the world. While genetic potential is inherited, its realization depends on nurturing emotional interactions that stimulate nerve cells and teach us how to navigate the world. The key message is that humans learn how to interact with the world early in life. Parent-child interactions play a crucial role in establishing a child's perception of the world, determining whether it is characterized by neglect, hostility, and indifference, or love and acceptance. Physical touch during infancy is vital, stimulating growth and development. Additionally, the quality of attunement, where parents are tuned in to their child's emotional needs, is essential. The absence of attunement and physical touch has lasting effects on a child's life, as demonstrated by the strange situation psychological experiment. Infants who received attuned attention at home exhibited signs of missing their mothers when separated but were easily soothed upon reunion, indicating secure attachment styles. Insecure styles, such as avoidance, were observed in other babies. 
Adolescents with secure attachment styles in infancy displayed greater emotional maturity, improved peer relationships, and academic performance compared to their insecurely attached counterparts. This underscores the profound impact of our early years on shaping adult interactions with the world, even if we aren't consciously aware of it. The key message here is that to overcome stress, embracing the power of negative thinking can be beneficial. When exploring the impact of emotions, stress, personality, and relationships on illness, it's important to avoid feeling blamed or blaming others. Instead, understanding the root causes of illness empowers individuals to take responsibility for themselves and their actions, moving away from a passive victim mentality. The author encountered patients in palliative care who struggled to comprehend why they developed cancer, especially those who prided themselves on being positive thinkers. However, constant positive thinking can become a destructive coping mechanism, leading to the repression of negative emotions, increased stress levels, and susceptibility to disease. The recommendation is to incorporate negative thinking, not in a pessimistic sense but by accepting and embracing all aspects of reality, including the challenges, and then finding ways to address them. Research supports the power of negative thinking, as evidenced by studies correlating emotional repression in melanoma patients with relapse and death. Conversely, patients who were less accepting and resigned to their illness, experiencing difficulty coping with the diagnosis, were less likely to suffer relapses. Psychological support, such as group therapy, has shown positive effects in cancer recovery, emphasizing the importance of understanding the root causes of stress and illness rather than denying or minimizing them. The key message in these insights emphasizes that health is a delicate balance, and chronic stress has the potential to disrupt this balance by negatively affecting the immune and nervous systems. Chronic stress is linked to the onset and worsening of various illnesses, including MS, cancer, and ALS. To combat stress and reclaim health, individuals need to confront unhealthy coping mechanisms, destructive personality traits, and repressed emotions. Actionable advice. It's essential to learn how to express anger effectively. While repressing anger can lead to physiological issues, expressing it through aggressive actions is also harmful. The key is to allow oneself to feel anger without resorting to destructive behavior. Instead, try sitting calmly and letting the emotion pass through without acting out impulsively. Thank you for returning and staying with us until the end, reflecting your commitment to progress and wisdom. In return, I kindly ask for a small favor. A simple act of liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting would be immensely appreciated. Your support helps the channel reach a broader audience and, consequently, grow. As a token of gratitude, I'll continue delivering book reviews from some of the most impactful books in the world. Thank you.